welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to be painting a winter scene that can be done as a Christmas card, but um, I'm going to be doing it on a 9 by 12 block and I'm going to be doing it in the portrait mode or vertical mode. And um, I apologize for the lighting. You're gonna see shadows on my work. I don't have my studio lighting here with me. This is going to be a winter landscape with a little bit of a river and some trees. You'll see it when I paint it. And um, okay, so I'm gonna be using some greens, some yellows, a little bit of Payne's gray, and I'll probably mix a bit of a violet. You're gonna hear some noise in the background with a fan blowing, that's the heat vent on my wood stove heating up my house and it will go on and off so I really don't need all those colors. I'm so used to spraying my greens, my yellows, and my reds for fall scenes that I've totally forgotten. I'm not even going to be using those colors. I didn't need to spray them at all. But you never know. I'll probably use, maybe I'll use a little red, but I've got plenty of violets in my colors here that I can get away with. And I want to move this a little bit so that I can wipe my brush. I usually keep a paper towel tucked under my water dish and when I rinse I always dab on that. But I like to keep another one by me in case I have to do a quick wipe up on my paper as well. So I'll just set that off to the side here and I'm going to start by mixing up some colors. I'll just grab my number 12 silver black velvet and I want to make kind of a yellowish green. Now I've got some rich green gold here that might work perfect if I keep it diluted. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, you can a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go across part of the back, especially over here. I want to wet this. And I was going to try to keep the edges of my paper cleaner. You don't have to do that on a, on a card, but for me, for framing purposes, if I like this enough to frame it, we'll see. And I'm going to keep a lot of white over here to the side. So let me just go ahead with this yellow. Remembering that your watercolor will dry lighter. Don't get freaked by how dark your colors may be getting against white snow. Um, I'm going to now take a little bit of my, let me see, I might try my perlene green because I'm going to be putting pine trees in and mixing it with the yellow. Perlene green is a very dark color, so I'm just going to lightly do this. Now I've got a lot of water down. It might have gotten a little bit too wet. I'm not used to this paper. I'm using Buckingford. Buckingford? Is that the name of it? Yeah, Buckingford Black by St. Cuthbert. Cuth I'm unable to answer your question. Ugh. Try again later. My phone, or my watch always does that the minute I'm on camera. Um, Anyway, I'm using a black that does not have cotton paper, so it's um, kind of a change for me a little bit. So now I'm going to also keep these colors for later because I'll be putting them down in my water down here, but I got to get my trees in too, so I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to go ahead and mix up some Payne's Gray or Payne's Blue Gray. Um, I think I'll go with the regular Payne's Gray today. Mix a little bit of that. That's going to be my tree color 
for most of my trees. And I may be mixing some Hematite Genuine too. You know how much I like that color. Now I'm going to go to a smaller brush. I will actually keep some lighter color for the background. So let me go ahead and mix a puddle of that. Uh, maybe some raw umber will work. Actually, I'm going to take my raw, my greenish, German greenish raw umber. Since I have a lot of green in this paper, I think that'll be a good mixture. You can use either or. This is just a little bit cooler than regular raw umber. And I like the cool color that it gives me. But to the naked eye, if you didn't see them side by side, you might not even notice it unless you're used to those colors. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and grab some smaller brushes. I'm going to grab my, my um, spotter brush, which is a number six. That is a Da Vinci. Of course, the numbers have come off because that's what happens on these plastic handles. And I'm going to also grab my number four um, Legend Sable brush. These are all Kalinske Sable. This one just is a little bit longer and has a nice fine point. It's almost as wide as my number six spotter. And I think that's all I need for now. And I'm going to go ahead and let that dry, but over to this side, I'm going to mix... Um, I'm going to get a little bit of my Payne's Gray, but I'm going to keep it on the lighter side. And I want to put in a big old pine tree somewhere. So. And I'm just going to let this go, go dry in spots because I like the way that that looks. And we'll just let it disappear. Now I'm going to go ahead with my darker color. And again, if it dries, that's fine. It'll just look like snow. Make sure you don't get it into your river. And I want one that's going to lean way over here so that they're not all perfectly straight. You wanna give, give your trees a little bit of um, variety. If you make them all perfectly straight, oh shoot, you know what? I did not mean to go off the top of the paper here. Oh well, that's okay, doesn't matter. Okay. I'm going to add more in, but this needs to dry. So now I'm going to go over to mixing up some. I'm going to actually soak up some of this color because I need the space here. I could grab my other palette, but for now I'm okay. Um, and I'm going to mix up a little bit of my violet. And I think I'm going to use Rose of Ultramarine. Um, that might be a little too red. How about ultramarine violet? Ultramarine violet might work better. I had to look at my chart there. That's what I was doing. This is my ultramarine violet. I don't know if you can see my, yeah, you can see my palette. So this is ultramarine violet. It's got kind of a strange consistency to it. It's very different and add a little water to that. And I'm also gonna grab a little bit of this Rose of Ultramarine, which is very red in color. I might mix those together. And then I'm gonna use some of my Payne's Blue Gray also. I'll put that over here. I might need that for the ice. Now, I wanna take some of my Hills and they're going to be shadowed. Whoops, that's the wrong ultramarine or wrong Payne's gray. Um, I'm going to take that Payne's blue gray, and I'm just going to kind of shadow across the top here of my hills. I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue 
to my palette also mix these together and you can do this yourself with your um, Payne's Gray if you have it and you want to make it bluer just add a little ultramarine to it and I'm just using some water and I'm spreading this out I want this to not all be colored in so leave some white maybe off to the left a little bit more you're gonna have room for tree shadows to come down um, so leave a little bit of that over here I want to add a little and dry brushing is great because it gives your snow kind of a cool look but take your brush in the direction that you want your shadow to be in. And I'm going to soften the edges a little bit. Okay. And then again, on the edges of your river, we can start with that and just kind of go along the edges want that to be a little bluer. And you can bring this in, out. I'm adding a little bit of my purples into this gray. Just mixing it up a little bit. Oops, that got into my water almost. This is still wet up here, so I'm going to go back to my perylene green, and now I'm going to make mix some perylene green, and I'm going to take some of this Payne's Gray and mix it into my green to gray this down even more. And um, then these trees are going to be snowy, so I only want the under branches to be receiving any color. So it's going to be very scattered. And in the end, if I need to add more color over the top of it, we'll add some shadowing to the snow to give definition to that. pine branch. <laughs> and a little bit of dry brushing. I have no idea if this is even going to turn out. Eh? I, I'm just winging it. <laughs> so, forgive me. I love this brush. This is the Legend brush. This is made by, this is a cheap Joe's brand, I think Legend is, but I'm not sure. It could just be its own brand. But anyway, I did get it at Cheap Joe's, and that's the only place I found them, so... Now I'm going to go back in, get some more of my Payne's, regular Payne's Gray, and make some branches. I may have to change brushes again. In fact, I am. I'm going to mix, mix up a little puddle here, and then I'm going to grab my rigger, or script brush, script liner, whatever you have. Um, or if you prefer to make your branches with a skinny brush, that's fine too. I like using a script liner because I can get more wild lines with it. I want these to look like scraggly pine trees from a forest that grow real uneven. And then I'm going to have some branches coming in from off to the side. A 
maybe down here. Now the nice thing about Payne's Gray is it is a staining color. So if you need to do something to your snow after the fact, you wait till this dries and you'll be able to do what you need to do. You can go right over it then if you'd like. <clears throat> because it stains so well. I'm going to have some little tree trunks coming up out of the snow too, but for the meantime, we'll just put these branches in. Got to water this one down a little more. Then I'm going to go ahead back to my other brush and I'm going to start working on some snow over here. Oop, got a splash bottom. I'm gonna cover up that little speck that I have there if I can. That'll work. A little bit of my purple. Looks like I got yellow on my brush. I don't know where that came from because I cleaned it up. Maybe it was on my palette or on my paper, I mean. Got a little bit too dark and I these are all staining colors so I don't think I'm gonna get anywhere scrubbing color off. I can add a little bit of gray to that to gray that down a little bit. Now if I have my light coming in on an angle I think I'm gonna have it come in just slightly on an angle. I'm gonna make some shadow color with this violet and the ultramarine blue I have, and I'm just going to kind of sweep this off here. And it's still too cold. So why don't I go ahead with my script brush. I'm going to actually, before I do that, I need to mix up some more raw umber here. Get that wet again. I want this to be a nice thick color. Actually, I want a darker color too. So I'm going to get some of my hematite genuine, of course. You guys know me and my hematite. Got to have my hematite. Make a puddle here and bring that in. This is not the brush to be mixing color with. Let me get a flat. If I had a flat here. Oh, it's not a flat. Didn't I bring my flats? I guess I did not. So I'll just use this angled one. It's synthetic. I can pull a lot of color out this way. Okay. Now I think I'm ready for my rigor. And I'm going to just put some branches coming up from the corner here. Now you see I went back down to my branch here and in order to keep these, the thickness, like going from thicker to thinner, I went over my line again, the same line, and then I can trail off from that. It was going to go the other way, but my brush ended up on the wrong side. Okay, 
There's that. And we'll have some stuff coming out the sides and over the water. You don't have to worry too much about your edges if this is going to be something that's framed because you'll have your mat going over that, remember. Um, but if it's a card, you're going to want to be careful on your edges because that will be seen. See how I got that lump there? If I had started on my trunk, then it wouldn't have been such a problem. So I was really bummed I didn't get to vote yesterday, being out of town like I am and not planning it. That was stupid of me. I didn't even go and watch election results because I didn't want to get myself all stressed out. Here in Michigan, we had some ballot proposals that were kind of big. My dad didn't get to vote either. And being 91, he really wanted to vote. But he moved into a senior, well, not a senior apartment. He moved into an apartment complex, a subsidized housing complex in uh, northern Michigan. And he... Uh, went from a driver's license to a state ID several years ago when he stopped driving. And then he updated his address and he told them, well, while I'm at it, I'm, I want to update my, my voter's registration too to coincide with this address, this new, new address that I have. And they said, oh, you're all set, sir. Everything is automatic. And he said, oh, it is. And she said, yes. Yeah. So he believed it. Yesterday he goes to vote, and sure enough, it wasn't automatic at all. So he was not a happy camper, not even a little bit. So he never got to vote. He couldn't even go back to his old voting poll because he wasn't showing up on either one. I don't know if they killed him off or what, but he was not happy. I may add more brush in. I will add more brush in, but I can't kind of see what I need to do here until I get all my trees in and my shadows. So I'm going to leave that like that over there. I'm going to add some low branches over here. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. Let me make a shadow out of that real quick. Maybe I can just dab it up. Dab that up. Gotta hurry with Payne's Gray, huh? I can't believe I did that. No, I can believe I did that because it's just like me to do something like that. I'll just add some branches in and when I have some shadow come down, that'll be fine too. Um, if you hold this, I had to dab a drop of color off the edge. Sometimes you need to do that with riggers. If you notice, you've got a ball of paint. Hold this at the end, and you can get even thinner lines because you're not putting any pressure on your brush. And as they get thinner, they get... You can get, let the color kind of go off your brush. If you're dabbing, if you're putting new paint on, start at a lower area. At least that's what I do. I've got a break in my branch there, but I'm not going to worry about it because I know I'll screw it up. But if you start in your lower area of your trunk and then let it fade out, then you have that gradual change in color. I'm going behind my pine color here a little bit. Okay, that's dry enough now. So I'm going to go back with my number four, and I'm going to grab some of that 
Um, actually, no, I'm going to go with my rigger because I need these to be way in the distance. And I'm going to grab some of this raw umber color. And I'm just going to pull in some distant trees. I want these to just be kind of lighter and going into the background. But I didn't want to do it while this was wet. I'm just kind of letting it disappear at the center here because I want this to be my source of light. And I should have left a little more white area, I think, but that's okay because it's more yellowish there anyway. Um, and this is going to be snow over here. Now, I want to put in some bigger tree trunks. So I'm going to grab my hematite. Nice strong dose. And this one will come up this way. Skinny tree. It's going to be a pine tree. Maybe another one over here. And I'm going to get that perline and gray again. Mixing them together. I'm going to make it lighter than that. Fade it out a little bit. And I'm just pushing backwards to get this branch effect. Makes it look very jagged. And I think it makes it more natural. Stick with the Payne's Cray a little more, I think, than, than this hematite. I forgot to leave my white here because I wasn't planning out my photo. Um, for a black. I want to have something a little bit darker here to go over this watery area. I'm going to have a little bit of water, but then I'm going to have a lot of ice. So, gray again. And I'm going to go over here to one of these little inlet spots here. And this is gonna be all ice in here. It's not blue enough. There we go. Now I think over here, I'm going to take 
take some of that. I need a smaller point, a finer point. A six might be better. A silver black velvet comes to a better point. Okay. Dries. I want to make this edge very dark, but I also want it to kind of bleed in a little bit into my gray. Now, as your lines come in, make sure you never put a dark color on the back side because you're going to be looking over that back side and you'll see snow rather than the black edges. But on the areas that are facing you like this, you can put the color in, not on areas that are away from you. I hope that made sense. So I'm going to do the same thing, just a tinch with this, but not all the way. green color but I want to water it down and I just want to come in branches a little more. I'm coming in with my neutral tint, I believe this is, on the bottom side of the branches. Over here, I probably could have left this thin because the light's coming in there. So I'm just going to dab that off a little bit. That's good. But this one, I'm not happy with the way this turned out. So Start on some shadows. Actually, before I do that, I gotta fix this little tree here.
And I want to work on the shadows coming down. So I'm going to mix this together again. some of my gray in there. And I want a little bit of snow coming across the water here where it's kind of frozen. So I'm going to leave some of this white and then I'm going to just take some of the edges and kind of um, gray it down a little bit. blue. That, that was so dark up here. I don't think I can scrub it out either. Oh well. Stopping there, so let's make this purple like shadowed snow and this is going to have more water coming through. I'm just fading out. And now over here, I'm gonna take my bigger brush again, wherever it went to, where's my big, here it is, my number 12. And I need to mix up that yellow green again. I'm gonna clean off my palette. And I'm gonna mix up that yellow green, which was my rich green gold. Need some of that. It doesn't need a lot, but just some. And my perlene green over here. And now I'm going to wet this whole area, uh, probably up to about here. And over here. My water's getting dirtier, so you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Gosh, I hope this wasn't all off the paper. No, it wasn't good. Um, I'm going to bring this over a little bit. Probably won't come down that far, but let me just bring that in. And then the perling green will come in too. And some of that Payne's Gray to darken in here. I think 
dark in there. This is going to be icier, I think. I don't want to bring too much color across because I want to have some snow and stuff coming too. But we can do that. Fade it out a little bit. And then I'll put in some tree trunks after that dries. Over here, I'm going to mix up again my ultramarine, which was getting low anyway. Everything was mixing together. And that ultramarine violet here. And I'm going to mix some of that together. I'm just going to sweep some of that across. I want to dry brush it, so I'm going to take a different brush, wet it, and dip it off. And I'm going to take some of that and just kind of dry brush it in here. More gray. Watered down though. That can be an overhang kind of a shadow. And then I'll bring some gray along the top in just a minute, but for over here, this one will be in the water. I may have to fix that with gouache because I lost some of my whites. Um, and here I want more water so that I can get some tree branches from this side over here. So I'm going to make this part a little grayer too. I think I'll do that. That way I can bring some branches in. And I still have to wait for that to dry. So we'll go up here and work on this a little bit more. Um, You can kind of see how that's taking shape where it's it's thawed here and here, but the center is snowy. My shadow can come across a little bit further here, across the snow. Make sure you match that color, though.
This one stops at the water's edge. And then it can pick up again in the snow here. And I need some more in the background here. have something coming back over here. I need a little more, I think, up here. I'm going to put a little more of that perling green mixture in. That gray. Make sure your trees that are further back are not going to have branches crossing over the other tree because that will look funny. Like this branch here coming across is from off the page, so it works okay. It could be a tree that's down here. Just wanted a little more green in here, though. I just needed to fill in that background. It was a little too stark, I feel. Whoop. Still waiting on that to dry. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom and work a little more on my branches. That one got a little messed up from my hand. I must have touched it. So I'm just going to take that and kind of fix it a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit thicker. There we go. And I can have something coming out off the bottom here. And some more twigs over here, just some stuff growing along the river's edge, poking up. Maybe some grasses coming out by the trees. Those can be a brown color dormant for the winter. Not wet enough. I'm just getting some brown ochre, gothite brown from Daniel Smith's collection. Um, do a few over here by the water. Boy, the wind is howling. I must have a window that's not closed all the way. I have to check that. It's humming right through the windows. Don't overdo it with the grasses. Just here and there. The further away they are, the, the shorter they're going to be, of course. And then up near the front, you can make them real tall. <clears throat> okay, now, over here I need to add the tree trunks at the water area, which is going to be up here. This one leans this way, 
So on this side, it's going to lean like this. And that one is pretty straight, but kind of copsaline. So I'm going to go ahead with some gray. And I'm going to have that one leaning out this way a little bit. And then that one's going to come up. And there's that one in the distance that's real light. So I'm just going to pale, put that in real pale back here like that. And there's a couple skinny ones. That'll work for that. And now this still a little cool but I think it's dry enough we can work with I want to get this on here I'm gonna have a couple of these this one can come out probably right here And then I'm going to have my, this one that winds this way. you got to do everything in reverse. Needs to be darker, though. It also had a couple branches, so I'm just going to have a couple that come out like that. And then that coming across. It's going to come across this way. intersects at this tree here. So I'm going to have it come out like that. Good enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I need to put in some of those distant trees too. It's a little bit too dark. Don't like how dark that got. There. I'm going to grab my white gouache because there's a few things I need to touch up here. I was just looking at that through, through my um, lens and it looks too similar to the other stuff. So I'm going to have to make that a little grayer better. Diesel enough. He must have saw somebody walk by on the road or something. He's not used to that because... Usually there's leaves on the trees and he can't see all the way out to the road. He gets a little confused here in the winter. So 
softening this out. Sometimes hard edges are fine, but for this water, it usually seems to fade unless you have a snow bank. As it turns to ice, it kind of changes and fades a little bit. And then I got the snow coming across there. And then along the edges, I'm going to change this to, it didn't come out right, so I'm going to change that to water there. That'll help that spot, I think. If I, I need a little more blue to kind of even that. If yours looks fine, you can leave it. This over here is the same. This blue, I do not like the blue. Gotta mix that all together. Now here I'm just working on my finishing touches, making sure my water is okay, touching up here and there, which is what I do at the end of a painting. And I'm going to bring the bluish gray color up a little bit more into this. I want this to fade out, but I want it to come in closer here to this edge. So I'm just going to have it fade in this way. There we go. That way it looks like it's snowy across, but... Wash. Oops, I left it by my fireplace. I was putting wood on the fire. log I think against that yellow sky it'll look very pretty yeah. and a little bit here and there it doesn't have to be on every part of the branch because a lot of it blows off can have it here and there. I tend to put my gouache on nearly full strength and it depends on your brand. I found that 
M. Graham and Windsor and Newton have the best um, white gouache. It's thicker. <laughs> get some snow on these branches too. I'm using the side of my brush because I have a lot of gouache on it. Now, now that it's a little drier, I'm going to try to dry brush some onto this. No, that didn't work. It's not dry enough. Here, now I got it dry enough. I had to wipe it off. going over my thin spots they're gonna turn green again I can already see it wasn't thick enough and if you want it to snow you can have snow coming down but with the light from the sky I figured it's not gonna snow in this one here it can be thinner Some light shadows from these too. this part of my branch out so the shadow isn't as dark in the shaded spots. Um, you can do it with your grass too if you want. You can go ahead and finish putting in your shadows. Just watch what direction they're coming from and make sure everything runs in the same direction. So that can be your Christmas card, although that would take you a long time to do that for a Christmas card, but it gives you some idea of something that you can do. This was just a quickie thing that I did off the top of my head. I did see a painting online that used a yellow sky and I liked that, so I just kind of made it my own. But. Um, in the meantime, though, uh, if you want to use that for a card, you can go ahead and use it for a card. I'm going to edit this down so that it's not super long. But um, everybody, remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Bye-bye.